excuse. Thank you. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Excuse. Susha? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. I'd ask that the Cub Scouts Troop 3804 please come forward and recite uh, the Pledge of Allegiance for us. Get a little closer, get a little closer. Come on, Morgan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, thank you. I can't do it. Put the uh, front. Okay. Next, we will have invocation by Reverend Julia Hollister of the First Congregational Church. Mike. Yes. Let us join in prayer. Gracious God, we gather with thankful and expectant and humble hearts on this night. We are thankful for all the leaders that are in this room. We give thanks for all the people who supported their campaigns, for those who worked hard to make sure that issues were addressed and that the desires and the concerns of the Sheboygan people were listened to. We gather with expectant hearts, excited by the potential for change that these individuals represent. We ask your blessing on our new mayor, Juan Perez, our new alder persons, Renee Susha, Vicky Meyer, Jeff Radke, Jean Davis, and Eldon Berg. We pray for your blessing upon the returning common council members, Jean Kittleson, Dennis Bauman, Jim Groff, Marilyn Montemeyer, Dick Manny, Daniel Berg, Margaret Sigali, Bonnie Serda, Bill Steffen, and Silas Vanderweel. As we give thanks for the work of the previous Common Council, we're also excited by the new ideas and fresh insights that accompany these new alder persons and mayor. Grant all of these leaders a sense of humility as they make decisions on behalf of the people of Sheboygan. Gracious God, we gather tonight because we deeply care for the city of Sheboygan. We pray that the diverse people living here may join in their efforts to seek the common good of all. May each of us work in our own way to create a community where all have meaningful work, all have warm houses, safe streets, and food on their tables. We pray knowing that we are surrounded by your strong spirit and peaceful presence. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We are now ready to swear in our new city clerk, Susan Richards. So repeat after me. I, Susan Richards. I, Susan Richards. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of city clerk. Of the office of city clerk. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. 
So help me God. So help me God. And next, the mayor elect will be sworn in by city clerk. Juan, will you raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me? I, Juan Perez, I, Juan Perez. swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of mayor. Of the office of mayor. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will now ask the new alderman elect to please step forward to, to be sworn in. I need you all to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of alder person the office of all the persons. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, all of you. <laughs> Next, we will adopt the rules of the Common Council. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the rules which govern the preceding council be accepted as the rules of this Common Council. There is a motion to approve the rules. There is a second. Second. There is a second. Is there a discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. This time we will uh, have the election of president of the Common Council. And uh, Sue. Okay, I'm sorry. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. This is the nominations for president of the council. There's a motion, second? Second. Under discussion? Not all those in favor state aye? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. point I'd ask for nominations for the uh, president of the Common Council.
Alderman Sagali? I'd like to nominate uh, Dan Berg for the President of the Common Council. Second. There's a motion and a second to nominate Alderman Berg, President. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate Alderman James Graff for President of the Council. I think he would do a marvelous job. There's a motion and a second to nominate Alderman Graff for President. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Graff? Who the nomination sees? Um, I would move that nominations be closed. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's have the meeting, but uh, vote. <clears throat> Is there someone didn't sign it? Okay, the results of the election for President of the Council, Alderman Groff, seven votes, Alderman Berg, six votes. Alderman Groff wins. Congratulations, Alderman Groff.
Next, we will have the election of the Vice President of the Common Council. Alderman Grau. Your Honor, I move that the nominations be received from the floor. Voting be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting con to continue until one candidate receives a majority. This is for Vice President of the Council. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to nominate Eldon Berg from the 1st District. Second. Second. There's a motion and a second to nominate Alderman Berg. Alderman Berg. I nominate Bonnie Serta. Second. There's a motion and a second to nominate Bonnie Serta. Any discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Nominations be closed. There's a motion to seize nominations. There's a second. <coughs> Any discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Motion carries. When you cast your vote, please make sure you sign your name. Uh, the results of the for the position of Vice President of Council, um, Eldenburg 7, Bonnie Serta 6. Eldenburg takes the position. Congratulations, Eldenburg. <laughs> Next, we will elect the one representative to the City Plan Commission, Alderman Graff. Yeah, and I move that nominations be received from the floor. Voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. This is for City Plan Commission. Is there a second? Yes. Alderman Graf would need to be done by open ballot. Just just the two council officers can be done by closed ballot. The rest would have to be. Closed. Everything else is open. Okay. Can I correct my motion to read? Open ballots that are closed. Okay. Thank you. Oh, is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Not. All those in favor of that motion, please state aye. Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Susha. Thank you. I'd like to nominate Alderman Montemayor for the position of a city plan commission. Second. There's a motion and a second to nominate Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Roth, did you? you? If there are. Yes, it is. Alderman Bowen. Thank you, Your Honor. It's my pleasure to nominate uh, Alderman Bonnie Serta as the council representative for City Plan Commission. Second. I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> as a plan commissioner, I believe she would listen to all sides of the issue at hand. She's not afraid to speak her opinions. Uh, nor is she afraid to ask questions before making any decisions regarding new business, signage, development, and the like. I got to know Bonnie more than a year ago while she was making a run for alderman. She sat quietly in the gallery every meeting when she took her papers out for nomination and took notes. Lots of notes. Then she went door to door when informed of the issues on hand. She was elected as alder person for her effort, and I feel she would serve well in a, as a council representative on the plan commission. And I hope this council will agree by casting your vote for Bonnie as the plan commissioner. There's a motion to nominate uh, Alderman Sadler. Is there a second? Is there a second? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff? And there are no other nominations. I move that the nominations be closed. There's a second. Motion to second to close nominations. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I, I'd like to ask the people in the hallway, as much as I would like to have you enjoy yourselves tonight, we do need to maintain a little bit of quiet. We're having a little difficulty over here. Thank you very much. Would you like that done, Alderman? Alderman Berg, would you like to have the names uh, read out loud afterwards? Uh, no, no, not particular. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to read them? Okay. Do you want them read, Alderman Berg? No. no.
Mine. I'll take a wild guess. I'll bet you do. <laughs> oh, you were backwards, but that's all right. <laughs> yes, I did. Ready? For the position on the City Plan Commission, Montemayor, seven votes, sir to six, Alderman Montemayor. Congratulations, Alderman Montemayor. Next, we will elect one representative on, to the Board of Contractors Examiners. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that nominations be received from the floor. Voting be done by open ballot. If more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. And this is for the Board of Contractors Examiners. A second. 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 Any discussion? Not all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate for the Board of Contractors Examiners, Alderman Jeff Radke. Is there a second? second. Alderman Baumann. Ma uh, I was going to make the same nomination. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I would move that um, nominations be closed and the unanimous ballot be cast for Alderman Jeff Ratke for the Board of um, Contractors Examiners. There's a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> and Finally, we will elect two, the council will elect two representatives on the Capital Improvements Commission. Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting be done by open ballot. If more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until two candidates have received the majority of votes. There's a motion to second. Under discussion? Not. All in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Susha. Thank you. I would like to nominate Alderman Manny to the Capital Improvements Commission. Second. Motion and a second. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Retke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to nominate Renee Susha to the uh, Board of uh, Capital Improvements Commission. We're doing both at the same time. There's a motion and a second. Are there any other nominations? And if there are no other nominations, I would move that a unanimous, unanimous ballot be cast for both. Um, Renee Susha and Richard Manny um, <laughs> for um, positions on the Capital Improvements Commission. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Congratulations. Now we are going to recess uh, just briefly to, so that the council can elect a chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Alderman Groff. Motion to recess. Move to recess. Is there a second? All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We stand recessed.
I will call the Committee of the Whole Meeting to order and call the roll. Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf is here. Kettleson is excused. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sagali? Stefan is excused. Susha? Here. Vander Willey? Here. 13 are present. Quorum is present. With that, I would entertain a motion that nominations for the position of Chairman of the Committee of the Whole be um, received from the floor. Voting be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. So moved. It's been moved and seconded. That the nominations be received from the floor and on open ballots. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair will vote aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Berg. I nominate Silas Vander Wheely for chairman of the committee to hold. Second. Marge? It's been moved and seconded to nominate Silas Vander Wheely. Are there any other nominations? As chair, as chair, I can. Um, I will also make a nomination. At this time, I'd like to put in the name of Marilyn Montemayor as Second. chairman of the committee of the whole. Second. Been moved and seconded to include Marilyn Montemayor in the run for city uh, committee, committee of the whole chairperson. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Then I would entertain a motion that nominations be closed. It's been moved and seconded that nominations be closed. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And I will vote aye.
the ballots for committee of the whole chairperson were seven for Alderman Montemeyer and six for Alderman Vanderwiel. Congratulations, Alderman. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll take a motion that we adjourn the committee of the whole meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn the committee of the whole meeting. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I will vote aye. We stand adjourned. We'll convene shortly. We, I did a motion to, re, to, to reconvene the Common Council so meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. <coughs> Alderman Berg, did you wish to speak, sir? The other Alderman. Did, did, you, did you wish to speak? No? no? Okay, the light just probably stayed on from last time. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, I'd like to report that the Chairman of the Committee of the Whole for the 2005-2006 Council year is Alderman Marilyn Montemeyer. Congratulations, Alderman Montemeyer. <laughs> and I would ask that the President of the Council, Alderman Graf, uh, please address the Council. <laughs> yep, we'll get that on. Pardon the voice, and I'll try and speak as loud as I can. And that's why mine isn't 10 pages like Alderman Bauman's was last night's. <clears throat> Good evening to our television audience, relatives and friends in the council chambers, department heads, the alder persons, my wife Yolanda, the city clerk Sue Richards, city attorney Steve McLean, and Mayor Juan Perez. Thank you to all the older persons for having the faith and trust in me to elect me to the position of president of the 2005-2006 Common Council of the City of Sheboygan. I will do my best to make you proud of your selection. Congratulations now to our newly elected older persons, Alderman Berg, Eldenberg, I should say, Alderman Dennis Bauman, Alderman Jean, Jean Kittleson, who's not here, myself from the 4th District, and Alderman Vicki Meyer from the 7th. And then over in the 2nd, Alderman Renee Susha, Alderman Jean Davis, Alderman Jeff Radke, Alderman Marilyn Montemeyer. Congratulations to all of you, and you have your work cut out for you. Welcome back to all the other Alder persons to what looks like it's going to be a very interesting and challenging year ahead of us all. Congratulations also to Sue Richards newly elected to her first full term as city clerk. And finally, congratulations to our new mayor, Juan Perez, <clears throat> who accepted the challenge to lead the city and to keep Sheboygan moving forward in a fair, honest, and equitable manner. I'm confident that Mayor Perez will change the way government does its business in the city of Sheboygan, and it will be what is best for the city of Sheboygan and its citizens. In order to accomplish this change, I'm asking the older persons to take a deep breath and step back and re-examine what we are all doing. 
I'm asking this of each and every one of us to work with the department heads, to examine all the details in the reports, and to come up with our own conclusions and not just depend on possibly three or four other older persons to come up with suggestions that we are to follow. I will be asking the chairperson of the Committee of the Whole, Alain Montemara, to schedule as many meetings as necessary so that we will all have the same information and all have participated in the same discussions in order that we will be able to make an informed decision on whatever topic we may be discussing. We also need to take into consideration the will of the people and make sure it's being heard. All older persons and citizens have a right to know what is going on in the city of Sheboygan and what we are discussing. Getting a second opinion on many things does not mean that we may have made a mistake, but that we may have received some new information and new facts that may show us the right thing to do. We need to revisit some issues and act on behalf of the taxpayers. If we wish to continue the legacy of the former mayor and council, we can do that or also we are here to develop a new and improved legacy of our own and we must learn to build consensus and to cooperate with each other. In the next several months, we will be taking votes on various issues that will be more than just a simple majority of the Common Council that's needed to, to pass. Some votes require two-thirds. Some votes require three-fourths of a majority to pass. We must and we need to work together to accomplish these goals and um, pass these various documents. As the 2005-2006 Common Council President, my message to each of you is to build a consensus, work together, share all information, have an open mind and do what is best for the city and citizens of Sheboygan. I ask you each to work with the mayor, department heads and each other in order to accomplish this our major goal and the rest will come easy. I look forward to working with you, Alderman um, Mayor Perez, excuse me, as well as all the department heads, the aldermen and the employees, and this, the 2005-2006 Common Council. And I ask for your support during this upcoming very exciting and challenging year. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Alderman Groff. At this point, I'd ask uh, Alderman Montemayor, Chairman of Committee of the Whole, to, to say a few words. Shall I stand here? You want me to go? Please. I think the walk up there will be longer than what I want to say. Well, if I stand on my tiptoes, can you see me? <laughs> Alderman Groff, good message. I agree with everything you've said, and you've laid some work on my shoulders. And I, I accept this responsibility. And thank you for the job of the Committee of the Whole Chairmanship. I'll take this responsibility seriously. We as a council will use the Committee of the Whole to discuss issues gather lots of information about challenges we face. We will be asking many questions and many questions will be asked of us. We need to listen and learn and ask anybody who has information to please help us. I look forward to a committee of the whole meeting soon. Thank you. <laughs> And now I would like to say a few words to the people of Sheboygan and the Common Council. Good evening, members of the Common Council, people of Sheboygan, City Clerk, Sue Richards, City Attorney, Steve McLean, friends and supporters. Tonight is a historic night. It is the beginning of a new era in municipal government for the city of Sheboygan. You wanted your voices to be heard and they will be. You wanted your government back, and you shall have it. 
there may be other days in my life that I will remember as I remember tonight, but it is not likely. My heart is filled with enormous pride, humility, hope, and gratitude for all that has led up to this night. As mayor, I began my duties with high hopes, high energy, and high expectations. My journey to this night has been long and challenging and invigorating. I thank you for electing me as your mayor. I thank you for your faith in my leadership and my commitment to serve you and represent your interests above all else. I want to thank my wife of 31 years, Sylvia, my son, CB, Regal, and Ethan for standing strong next to me. I want to thank my daughter-in-law, Sarah, and my first grandson, Austin, for giving me another reason to want to make Sheboygan the best place to live and raise a family. Without the help of so many fine people, so many wonderful people during my campaign, I would not be here tonight, but I am here and a bright future awaits us, and I cannot wait to start. The needs of our citizens will be our top priority. During my administration, the city of Sheboygan will be committed to you. You are our customer, and we will provide you with the best services that meet your needs and exceeds your expectations. This administration will conduct itself with the highest integrity, openness, accountability, and professionalism. We will treat everyone impartially, decently, respectfully, and compassionately. We will strive to earn your respect and confidence by listening to you and making you our top priority. During the next several months, I will be working hard to fulfill some of my promises I made to you. I will begin the implementation of my budget prioritization program. We must come to grips with the financial struggles the city faces. The people have told us plainly and quite frequently that we must carefully balance the services they need with their ability to pay. This program should reveal the true expense activity of the delivery of our services. We will be able to evaluate costs and track the efficiency of those services in order to make your tax dollar work harder and smarter. In the face of financial reality and constraints, I ask this common council to work with me to look forcefully, honestly, and with no obligation to any interest group but the taxpayer as we prepare for next year's budget. I will make the building of a new police station a priority, but it's not going to get built on Sheridan Park. I will do what is necessary to save Sheridan Park. In my mind, my heart and my soul, Sharon Park will not be destroyed. Members of the Common Council, old and new, you heard the people speak and reach out to you during this last election. They spoke clearly to you again. Please be responsive. Don't continue to ignore them. I will promote legislation to reactivate the Parks and Forestry Commission. I will promote legislation to make it difficult, extremely difficult, for a mayor or alderman to ever again attempt to destroy a park. I will put together a task force made up of city, county, school officials, and citizens to begin charting the road we will take to realize the true cost saving potential of optimum shared services. We will begin building visionary partnerships with neighboring jurisdictions, the county, and the school based on trust and honesty. We can no longer afford to isolate ourselves. We must reach out to others if we are to succeed. I will work hard with the business community to chart our course to success in making our great city of Sheboygan not only the best place to live in, but also to visit. We, wish, we shall welcome visitors with open arms and great amenities, and we will also encourage everyone to stay. I know that growth, controlled growth, is vital to our community, but we must manage growth in a manner that is high quality well-planned and acceptable to our community. I ask our business leaders to work closely with me to make Sheboygan progressive and yet maintain some of that good old-fashioned feeling that has made our community so attractive to many. And finally, as we move forward to promote and preserve
the safety and quality of life of our citizens, I respectfully ask the Common Council and our city employees to embrace a spirit of teamwork and unite in public service to our community. I ask each alderman to demonstrate true commitment to their constituents, but to always remain mindful that your individual vote collectively impacts our entire community, not just your own district. We truly have been entrusted with great responsibility and we must answer the call of our duty with the entire community in mind. Let our thoughts and actions reflect our total commitment to the people of Sheboygan. And as the psalmist once wrote, let your good spirit lead me on a level path. Thank you and God bless this beautiful city of ours. Mayor's appointments, Steve. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit. I'm oh, sorry. Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Stephen Hemsing to be considered for appointment to the Architectural Review Board to fill the unexpired term of Gerald Jones, no longer on plan commission, whose term expires 4 07. Dale Fell to be considered for change from alternate number one to full member of the Board of Appeals, term expiring 43007. Pete Streisick to be considered for change from alternate to full member of the Board of Contractors Examiners, term expiring 43006. Craig Cedar to be considered for appointment to the Board of Contractors Examiners as alternate to fill the unexpired term of Michael Schrader, no longer city resident, whose term expires 43006. Lee Montemayor to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Jeff Maining, no longer city resident, whose term expires 43006. Ed Gennaro to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Eldon Berg, whose term expires 43007. Stephen Hemsing to be considered for appointment to the Capital Improvements Commission to fill the unexpired term of Gerald Jones, no longer plan commission member, whose term expires 43007. David Gallianetti to be considered for appointment to the Citizens Advisory Committee on Community Development to fill the unexpired term of Eldon Berg, whose term expires 43006. Thomas Paneski to be considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill the unexpired term of Joe Bonet, whose term expires 43007. Signed by the Mayor. That will lie over. And to the honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. These are to the standing committees, to the finance, Alderman James Groff, Chairman, uh, Alderman Stephan, Vice Chairman, Alderman Montemeyer, Susha, and Davis, the Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Renee Susha, Chairman, Alderman Montemeyer, Vice Chairman, Alderman Radke, Meyer, and Davis. Public Works Committee, Alderman Dennis Bauman is Chairman, Alderman Manny is Vice Chairman, Alderman, Alderman uh, Kittleson Berg, that's Eldenburg, and uh, the fifth position is from the open second district. Salary and Grievance Committee, uh, Alderman Eldenburg, Chairman, Alderman Graf, Vice Chairman, Alderman Serta, Danberg, and the fifth position is open also, the open seat from the second district. The Law and Licensing Committee, Alderman Richard Manny, Chairman, Alderman Radke, Vice Chairman, Alderman Vanderweel, Meyer, and Sigali. Signed by the Mayor. That will lie over. And the Council, I believe, has copies of all of these. There's eight pages of appointments to the various boards, commissions, and authorities <coughs> for the city, and uh, those are submitted for uh, consideration. That too will lie over. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Public forum, Sue. Yes, on our public. On our public forum, first on the list is Frank Colton. There's no microphone back there. Okay, just have him come up here. 
Mr. Coxan, would you Just mind coming up to this microphone right here, please, for tonight? It'll take a little. We would appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And if you could give me, when you have a chance, your address, please, Mr. Coxon. Certainly. 2829 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. Because I only have five minutes, my congratulations to the new mayor, our new and returning aldermen. Our city clerk must, of course, be brief. I do wish, I do wish you all the blessings of good health and your deliberations, a clear mind and a calm temperament and this spirit of collegiality. And uh, whether I agree or disagree with you, I do uh, respect and admire you for the time you are willing to take out of your lives that can never be replaced to help manage this wonderful city of ours. So congratulations and thank you. I'm especially aware of the passage of time because tomorrow is my 62nd birthday. <laughs> So, I am here again to speak on the subject of building a police station at Sheridan Park. I'm here especially to respond to former Alderman Werner's comment yesterday that the uh, Engberg report does, quote, not pass muster of being an independent report. I'm not here to defend the Engberg report by rebutting the former Alderman Werner's assertion, but rather to focus upon the Kimmy report itself and illuminate the kind of details that will motivate you to read that report with an open and analytical mind. I believe you would find the Kimmy report does not, quote, pass muster itself as a reliable document for this important decision. In fact, I believe that a close examination of the outcomes of the various selection criteria, I'll discuss that in a moment, that favored Sheridan Park over the Imperial Motel site will in fact support a position that favors the 23rd Street site over Sheridan Park, exclamation point. Such a conclusion is possible because now that the Imperial Motel site has been withdrawn from consideration, the selection criteria are turned topsy-turvy, and the logical outcome is no longer a slam dunk that Sheridan Park must be the inevitable choice. I have enlarged the sheet in the community report that has the evaluation criteria. They have all the sites listed they have five categories uh, subdivided for a total of 21 criteria. Between Sheridan Park and the next site selection, in the site which was the Imperial Motel, of the 21 criteria, they are tied on 10, excuse me, tied on 11, and evenly divided on 10. And the difference between the two is only 19 points. 19 points, 365 for Sheridan Park versus 346 for Imperial Motel. Of those, 10 points were impact on the tax base, and now that we're considering 23rd Street, that's not a consideration. Acquisition and development costs, another 10 points, that's not a consideration. Availability and readiness, that's not a consideration. 10 plus 10 plus 8, that's 28 points. All of a sudden, Sheridan Park is in the head. There are a whole raft of things. The cost of construction, which is disputed between the Kimmy Report and the Engboard Report. In the Kimmy Report, it acknowledges it costs more to build a two-story structure than a one-story structure. And as of the report, which is about two years old now, it costs $3.31 more per square foot to build a two-story building. And at 47000 um, so I could, uh, 46,473 square feet, that's $154,750.09 more to build a two-story building. Some other things. In favor of Sheridan, environmental impact because the uh, contamination at the um, uh, 23rd Street site. Well, there are no saw borings taken. So how can you consider that? That's another eight points. It goes on and on. One of the considerations that uh, is, a, is a, a factor is land for on-site parking. And uh, there, Sheridan Park 
had negative five points. And of course, 23rd Street offers much more of an opportunity. So what I'm saying is, if you examine this report analytically in the light of the fact that it's 23rd Street and not the Imperial Motel, you can't help but say, this has to be reevaluated. <sighs> there is that impact on the tax base that counted so much, and it's not going to count any more. A huge issue was the general acceptability and compatibility with neighbors. Please, please respect the wishes of your citizens. Mr. Coxan, I'm sorry, your five minutes are out. I had something to say about the appendix. I would like to ask for the council's gracious permission to continue because there's something about the, the microwave tower which is very significant and that was a factor in the, in the decision. Thank you. I had some other things to say, but I'll just cut to the chase when it comes to the microwave tower. There is an appendix to the committee report. I hope you read it. There's several pages that are just numbers. But there is the part titled Site Analysis for Data and Radio Communication Requirements. The paragraph says, I'll read it verbatim. Well, there's two small omissions just to condense it. Data, radio and data communications are vital and each site, of those sites that were considered, must be analyzed for their ability to accommodate the connectivity of these systems. It will require data connections back to City Hall, plus the connection of the radio consoles to the countywide radio system, which means they must ultimately terminate at the main radio site at Taylor Hill. All the sites will need an antenna. It was brought up that the microwave site, microwave at uh, Imperial Motel would cost $50,000. Well, it turns out, listen to this. Well, first, Sheridan Park. A communication tower would still be required for other point-to-point -point communications. You still have to build a tower. And regarding Imperial Motel, and I say this is still applicable, this is also applicable to 23rd Street. And please let me read this in its entirety. The only option for this site may be a microwave system. And that goes on, interestingly enough. A fiber optic could be installed from this site to the fire department headquarters on 25th Street, and then tied into the microwave system at this site, thereby eliminating the need for the fire department to have the T1 line that they currently have. Now, what is a T1 line? I had to ask my wife about this because she's working on a degree in technology. She says, that's an institutional line connecting to the internet. And she says, it costs about $1,000 a month. You could save $1,000 a month by tying the fire department with a, micro, uh, with a fiber optic to the 23rd Street site and connect it with the microwave system. Here's something also interesting, and with this I'll conclude and thank everybody for the time and for your generous willingness to offer me this extra time. This arrangement could also help enhance the capability of the City County Emergency Operations Center and for the City's Disaster Contingency Plan. In other words, the microwave tower, which was supposed to be such a liability, is actually an asset. Thank you. Next on the list is Joseph Clark. Mr. Clark, would you please come up to the front mic? I 
And Mr. Clark, can you give me your home address, please? Certainly, 319 Michigan Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the 2005-2006 Common Council, congratulations to those newly elected, and thank you to all of you for giving your time to serve the citizens of Sheboygan. Last night, in a very interesting civics lesson, the former Common Council voted to file the Engberg-Moyer report on the police station, and comment was made that the report may be brought back. We are all aware that in a high-profile court case, expert witnesses can be found to argue for each side of the case. Emotions run high, and it's easy to make a decision based on emotion or politics, and then to cling to the report of the expert that supports one's own cause while labeling the other side as biased. That seems to me to be what is happening now. Any subsequent discussion brings with it an agenda. How then to proceed fairly? Let me state at the onset that I'm not affili affiliated with Zimmerman Design Group. I'm not currently involved in this process in any official capacity, merely a concerned citizen of Sheboygan. However, I was the project manager for the Steuben Rock Architects who oversaw the City Hall half of the 2002 Steuben Rock Kimmy study and coordinated closely with Kimmy Associates as they developed the police station component. I'll be the first to point out that I'm not an expert on police facilities. I did, however, have a front row seat to the meticulous process that Kimmy used to evaluate the sites in question. I would encourage you to re-examine the original Kimmy reports prepared prior to this issue becoming divisive. Please do not let other people, myself included, tell you what these reports say or do not say. Please read them both and the Kimmy review of the 23rd Street site for yourselves, and I would be happy to answer any questions I can. As you investigate the facts in order to make your decisions, I would point out that there are many statements circulating which I consider to be flat out wrong or at least misleading. Two brief examples. First, a larger site allows more room for expansion. This seems to be logical. However, I don't find it to be true. If you have a larger site but are filling it to 100% of its capacity with a single story building and parking, you have no room for expansion. Similarly, if you have a smaller sloped site and fill it to, say, 80% with parking and a two-story building, and then wish to maintain the remaining 20% as park, you again have no room for expansion. In each case, you're going to be looking for additional land for future expansion. And that's a key point, future expansion. The Kimmy study looked at demographic trends and allowed for growth for the next 20 years. I assume that the Zimmerman design is also allowing for foreseeable growth. So the question becomes, in 20 years, land adjacent to which site will be more affordable, and which land will better serve the tax rolls. Second, you get more building for your dollar on a single level site. As a general point, this is correct. In this instance, I find it misleading. Kimmy based their cost estimates on the industry standard RS means historical cost data. The difference in base construction cost between the one-story and two-story approaches showed that, all else being equal, you will see about a $394,000 savings for building the single-story approach. But keep in mind that much of that savings is lost if you introduce even a partial basement or second floor at 23rd Street. But that's not the whole picture. All else is not equal. Utility costs were found to be approximately $100,000 more expensive at 23rd Street. The cost of a communications antenna required an additional $200,000. There were also costs associated with the county's salt shed, resulting in the two site costs being just about balanced without even addressing the concerns of the filled-in drainage ditch running through the 23rd Street site or lower operational costs associated with a more compact two-story building or most importantly, the site acquisition costs for the 23rd Street site. What you are left with is an equation where, for comparably designed buildings, the Sheridan Park site will be less expensive than the 23rd Street site by, at minimum, 
the acquisition costs of the 23rd Street site. In conclusion, these seem to be the relevant questions. What is the current cost to purchase the county land? How much of a premium are we willing to pay in order to keep Sheridan you Park? Clark, your five minutes are up. Move to allow extra time for this one here. Second. Thank you. I will be brief. Thank you. And finally, are we in a financial position to be able to pay for that premium, even if we want to? Regardless of where the new police station is located, please keep the process moving as quickly as possible. The current facility is an accident waiting to happen, and it's a credit to the department that they have used it so well. Good luck to all of you, and thank you very much. Next on our list is Scott Lewandowski. Scott, could you please come up to the front mic? Scott, I would need your home address, please. Okay, it's 2201 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Okay. First of all, I want to congratulate the new mayor and new city clerk and the new members of the Common Council and also the members of the Common Council who have been reelected. This even includes my opponent in the election, Dennis Bauman. I wish all of you the best of success and I hope that the people of Sheboygan support you. And the best way to get the citizens of Sheboygan to support you is to listen to them. Most members of the previous Common Council showed the people of Sheboygan that they wouldn't listen to the citizens of Sheboygan. Most members of the previous Common Council told the citizens of Sheboygan, we don't care what you have to say. This was shown by throwing in the garbage, filing, a petition with over 3,000 signatures of Sheboygan citizens requesting a referendum on Sheridan Park. Then last night, the same Common Council voted to throw in the garbage a report by Sheboygan business leaders and showing these business leaders that the Common Council is not willing to work with them. One reason given by Alderman Berg was that the report was biased. Who is biased when the Common Council won't even look at this report or allow the new Common Council to look at it. Your actions speak louder than words. I do not want to see history repeat itself in destroying a park. In 1920, there was another park on 14th Street in Sheboygan, Bourne's Park. Bourne's Park was considered one of the beauty spots in Wisconsin, with people coming from as far away as New York State and Washington State. The owner was Charles Bourne, and he wanted to sell his park to the city. Bourne was a former police chief, alderman, and four-time mayor of Sheboygan. The people of Sheboygan wanted the city to buy the park, and in 1920, signed petitions to have this purchase put to a referendum. The petitions were ignored by the mayor and common council. Various people tried until 1927 to get the city to buy the park. Finally, in the spring of 1927, the park was destroyed when the trees were all cut down, the land leveled off, and houses were built on the former park grounds, which were located between 14th and 15th Streets, Michigan and St. Clair Avenue. In 1928, which was the first election after the park was destroyed, eight aldermen were eligible for re-election. Six ran for re-election. The day after the election, in what the Sheboygan Press called surprising because of how rare it happens, four of the six incumbents lost their bid for re-election. Some of you in this room tonight are in favor of destroying another park on 14th Street, and you reface re-election 50 weeks from tonight. Three of the biggest supporters to destroy Sheridan Park were defeated two weeks ago because they do not listen to the citizens of Sheboygan. Will you be next? Some members of the previous Common Council claimed that the Sheridan Park site would save money. 
The Enberg report did not back this up, so that report was thrown in the garbage. How much money will the Sheridan Park site save for the police station? The cost of building off-site a separate evidence storage unit and staffing it was not mentioned. Nor was the cost of travel, time, and gas between these two sites mentioned. There is no one in the city that I have talked to that is not in support of a new police station. But the majority of the people want Sheridan Park saved and a police station located on 23rd Street. Listen to the people and save Sheridan Park as a park. In order to do a good job and do what is best for the city and future of Sheboygan, you must have the support of the people. We must all work together. United we stand, divided we fall. We must unite to build the police station at the 23rd Street site. Show the people of Sheboygan that you are listening to them. When you ignore us, the people of Sheboygan, the Common Council, is telling us that you have no respect for the citizens of Sheboygan. That's all I have. The last on our list is Mark Summer. Mark, could you please come up to the mic? Mark, would you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's 523 South 14th Street. And you will have five minutes. Congratulations to the new mayor and the council. I would like to express my sincere thanks to the mayor and the common council, the city plan commission, and the development and planning department of the city of Sheboygan for their recent position on the ethanol plant. Also, I'd like to thank the city clerk's office for the ease in obtaining public records. It does indeed show citizens and government can work together. Thank you again. Resolutions introduced, 1-1. One, one. Alder McGraw. Then I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage, and it's to reactivate various special committees for the 2005-2006 council year. There's a second? Second. Under discussion. Alderman Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, uh, have an amendment to remove the special marina committee from that list in as much as that is reconstituted by uh, your committee appointment as the, uh, I can find it here, the Marina and Harbor Commission. So I would uh, move to amend the Special Marina Committee entry to the Marina and Harbor Committee. There's a motion, there's a motion to amend and a second. All those in favor of the motion, I mean, I state aye. aye. Any opposed? Alderman Graf. Then, Your Honor, as um, amended, I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. Put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Not all those in favor, sta state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. One, two, one, three will lie over. One, four to one, six to be referred. Other matters, Steve? This is an RO by the City Clerk committing the review of the proposed City of Sheboygan Police Facility, its impact upon shared law enforcement service potential and site considerations and associated costs. And that will be referred to building use. Thank you. Anything else? Excuse me. B before we adjourn, I would just like to make an announce a couple of announcements, three announcements. In I would ask that any interested party that would like to be considered for the vacancy of the aldermanic seat of the second district, which I vacated, uh, to please submit a letter of interest. It would help if you would attach a resume or some type of bio to that letter of interest, and please submit it to uh, City Clerk Sue Richards no later than Friday, April 29th. Anyone who is interested in being considered for that position. I would also just briefly just thank uh, Lee Montemayor. Folks, I got my own engraved 
gavel tonight. Pretty <laughs> awesome. <coughs> and finally, please join us for finger food and light refreshments in the third floor conference room. And I would like to add that all those refreshments and food were, were donated by supporters and friends. There's no tax money being used to, to pay for those. Is there a second? Stand adjourned.